Hey everybody, it's Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review, and today I have, as promised, a video on how to replace the screen on an Acer Aspire E15 E5 575G series laptop. I have the 57D4 version, which is a refresh of the 53VG version that's very popular on Amazon. As you can see right now, this is the panel uh, that's in the original laptop. It's a TN panel. Uh, you're going to have links below to the replacement panel that I got. Uh, I got a replacement panel from East Coast LCDs on Amazon, and you can pick up this. It's a high gamut IPS model. Uh, on Amazon for about $55 at the time of this review. Now, if you look at directly at this TN screen, it looks pretty good. Not bad at all. Side viewing angles are okay on it. Colors are okay on it. Uh, but the problem with this is when you go, it washes out if on the verticals, uh, backwards and forwards there. And as you can see, when you're looking at it dead on, it still looks good, but it has a little bit of whiteness to it. Overall, not a terrible thing. This is more of a nitpick, something that I wanted to do. So we're going to explain how to replace this TN panel with an IPS or high gamut panel. Uh, and you'll have the link to that panel down below. So again, looking on it uh, straight on, uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, overall, not a bad panel. Uh, the TN panel that I'm replacing uh, with this IPS panel, the IPS panel is going to be a B156HAN01.1 panel. Uh, again, you can see the washout in the vertical images, uh, and it really only has about 15 degrees of vertical uh, versus the 80 to 85 degrees of horizontal. Uh, so first thing we're going to want to do is power off our machine. You don't want, you know, obviously anything powered on while we're doing this. So we're going to shut everything down. And then we are going to also uh, unplug the mains as well or the uh, plug so that you guys don't have anything plugged into this. So we'll unplug that as well. Uh, what uh, you're really going to want to do, and I'm going to turn the laptop sideways so that you guys can see that, uh, is you're going to want to remove the bezel is the first thing. Uh, and sometimes they have some screws uh, or stickers uh, on the 575G series. They do not. And you're basically just going to want to lift the panel, uh, the bezel away from the panel itself uh, by just applying some pressure underneath. I usually start at the side here and it's going to pop up and you are going to be able to release some clips. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just put some pressure on the inside and kind of get my fingernail in the crease on the outside. Uh, and you're going to uh, hear the clips uh, kind of release as you go around. Uh, so it takes a little bit to get it started. You can find one spot where one of the clips is, uh, and then they'll start to pull away from the bezel. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to stop talking and uh, kind of fast forward through getting the, these clips to undo so that we can actually uh, get the whole entire bezel off, and then I'll be right back. Uh, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit for you so you're not stuck here for 20 minutes watching that. Okay, so now that we have the bezel off, there's going to be four screws uh, that you're going to see on this. Uh, two on the bottom, two on the top uh, in each corner there. So it, it's very easy to uh, remove this particular screen. It's not held in uh, on the sides in any way. Uh, some models are. The 575G series is not, so you do not have to worry about the sides at all. It's just the four screws. Uh, the other bracket can be left the way that it is. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll remove uh, those four screws and then uh, show you uh, the connector to the panel so that you can actually uh, get the uh, old panel out and put the new panel in. So let me speed this up a little bit for you so that you can see that.
Okay, now that we've got the four screws out, you can uh, easily lift the screen forward uh, and you can then just lay it down on the keyboard. Very simple and easy. And there you will see that there's only one connection is a 30 pin connector uh, there. Normally uh, you should just, and I forgot to do this, but you should take something and put it over the keyboard to protect the screen, especially if you're replacing the screen. You're gonna to wanna to keep your old screen in good condition uh, in case you ever need to replace it again uh, or use it as a backup screen, which is what I'll do. I'll just keep my old TN panel and uh, use that as a backup screen. So the 30 pin connector has some tape over top of it and I'll try to maneuver it so that you guys can see that a little bit uh, better here. Uh, and that's the only connector that you really have to worry about. So let me adjust this down so that you guys can see that. Uh, it's just a, a single 30 pin connector with a little bit of tape over it. Uh, you're just gonna be wanna be very careful when you're peeling up the tape because you're just gonna use that tape to um, uh, put back down when you reconnect the new display. Uh, so it takes a little getting uh, your fingernail in there or something in there to get it started and then it kind of just peels up from there. Uh, it is on there pretty good uh, for a reason to, you know, make sure that the 30 pin connector does not come loose. Uh, just to, again, with most things on this upgrade, just take your time uh, and peel up the plastic or tape there that's covering the 30 pin connector. And then uh, once you get it free, uh, it's very easy to remove that 30 pin connector uh, like we will do right here. Uh, so you guys will see uh, that once it's out uh, and the LCD itself is free, which I'll have here in just a second, there we go, there is our 30 pin connector. Now that connector is, you're going to want to make sure that you have that uh, same exact 30 pin connector. Now this was an Inolux N156HGE EAL revision C1 panel, that is the TN number uh, or the TN panel number. Uh, so we'll put that to the side and we'll get our new panel. And our new panel, again, is a B156HAN01.1 uh, high gamut IPS display with a 30 uh, pin connector, as you'll see here in just a second as well. Um, very simple to put this back in. You just want to be careful with it. Make sure that it's fully seated when you do. Uh, so you're just going to take that 30 pin connector and reconnect it. Uh, just be careful not to force it uh, to uh, make sure that it lines up, uh, which as you can see, I'm having a difficult time doing and it's a small connector, uh, but uh, with a little bit of patience, again, uh, you won't have any problems putting that back on. So basically once that is on, we're gonna remove the uh, protective film on the front of it, which I will do here in just a second. Make sure that that tape is down nice and firm. And then we're gonna reverse our steps. Uh, so we're just going to uh, seat the screen back in there and we're gonna power it on real quick as well uh, to show you that it is working. Uh, but I'm gonna take off the uh, protective film here in just a second uh, once I make sure that everything lines up as it does, uh, there's uh, two holes, as you can see, and they're not both screw holes. Uh, the one is kind of just a placeholder uh, that has a pin in it that you can make sure that everything gets uh, put in place. And the other one is a screw hole. Uh, make sure that the there are no wires that popped out of any of those spots in the bottom as well. And then you're good to go. Uh, so now we've got it in. Uh, I did not take the uh, plastic cover off, so I'm gonna have to pull it back out real quick to get the plastic cover off of it, uh, which is what I'll do right now. And then we will reverse our steps. Uh, but first we will do a test on this so that you can see uh, that it is working because you don't wanna put the whole thing back together, power it on, and then get to the point where uh, you know, that you didn't seat the uh, connector properly or whatnot. So you wanna make sure that you stay away from uh, that issue. So we'll get this off and we'll reseat it uh, to make sure that it's good to go. And we won't screw it back in yet or put the bezel on it. We'll power it up just so you guys can see uh, that it does power on. Uh, and you should do this too, uh, because if I had missed, you know, uh, didn't push that 30 pin connector all the way in, uh, you'd have to take it all apart again. And the last thing we wanna do is have to uh, backtrack on our work. So 
let's power this up and immediately you should see some sort of difference. Uh, again, I've got lighting in the background, so that makes things a little bit uh, more glary. Thank God it's a matte screen and not an, uh, a glossy screen because then you'd have that uh, going on too. But we are obviously powered up and the screen is working. Uh, I will log in and show you the desktop uh, so you can see. And at the end of this video, you're gonna have some before and after pictures on here as well. So if you wanna skip to the end, uh, you can do that and see what the differences are uh, before and after. Already, you can see, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, just the difference in color and how the color pops a lot more on this display. Um, the side viewing angles are pretty much the same, a little bit better on this uh, high gamma IPS display. Uh, and your vertical is way better uh, than it was before. Uh, so obviously I'm just kind of holding it in place uh, just to do the test. Uh, so now we're going to want to reverse everything and I'm going to do that in fa uh, fast motion as well so that you guys don't have to sit through all of that. Uh, and we're just going to make sure that it's popped in place, put the four screws back on and get our bezel back. Okay, so now that we have everything back in place, we're gonna plug it back in and we are going to power it back on. And then we can kind of do a full uh, comparison of the screen from the beginning of the video to the screen after we have everything replaced. Uh, I turned the lights down a little bit so you guys could get a good idea of what the new screen will look like in here. Uh, again, right off the bat, as I log in here, I see the background looks uh, a lot better as far as colors popping. Look at the vertical angles, uh, you know, extreme vertical angles uh, versus what they were before, forward and backwards. Uh, so that's that high gamut IPS uh, benefiting uh, your side angles. They weren't so bad on the beginning TN panel, but they are just as good at about 85 degrees. Uh, but that vertical angle issue is now no more. And even when you're looking at it dead on, you don't really see that kind of whitish uh, tint to it that you saw before on the TN panel. Uh, so, so far, everything looks great. This particular panel, again, cost me about $50, uh, a little over $50, 50 to $55 on Amazon, and you'll have that uh, link in the description below where you guys can check it out. Uh, just make sure that when you go through uh, the bezel that you make sure that all the tabs are re-snapped into place and you're good to go. Uh, so, Overall, I had a great experience with upgrading this laptop to this new IPS high gamut panel. You can do it again for about $55, which is an excellent upgrade to the 575G series laptops. This will work in the uh, 53VG. It'll also work in the uh, one that I have as well, the Refresh, the KB Lake Refresh. Um, any 575G series Acer laptop uh, will take this panel. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's so much better than that original TN panel. And for $55, uh, that's a heck of a deal. Uh, and I think that everybody should uh, definitely take advantage of that. Uh, seeing as that the overall laptop itself at $549 is such a great deal. Uh, they did uh, everything really well on this laptop except for that TN panel was one thing that I just couldn't get over. So I figured, hey, what the heck, for you know, $55, I'll replace it myself. So uh, that was uh, how to replace uh, the 575G with an IPS high gamut panel. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave uh, some comments below. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. I'm going to show you some before and after pictures before I get out of here, and I'll be right back. So here's the before on the vertical. And as you can see, you've got a washout there. And then here is the after on the same vertical angle. Much, much, much better. Your before on uh, the backwards or pushed back angle. And then the after with the high gamut IPS display. Much more noticeable on tilting forward. This is a before on a side view with the old TN panel. 
And then this is the after view with the high gamut IPS panel. Thanks for watching.